Okay, we're going to start looking at Nibar Defense now as the bottom player against somebody in our half guard on top that starts looking for either the back step to start setting up the four level knee bar heel hook threat as well as throwing their leg or shin over to start moving to like an outside ashy twisting around into the four level. So or into rear ashy. So here as I'm in Kevin's half guard, typical ways that the leg locks get set up here is under hooking the leg is a very popular way of choosing it if I'm going to be throwing my leg over and posting the hand, bringing the shin up and over, sliding the shin through into the rear ashy or spinning all the way through to the 411. Either way is going to be really threatening for leg locks, but especially the knee bar. Some guys, depending on the space that uh, your opponent's going to create between the knee and elbow, depending on how uh, effective their half guard is, you may be even able to just take the leg and throw it right through. And now we can either start falling the outside ashy on this weaker side, attacking the heel hooks, or once again, pivoting through to rear ashy. Last main way, usually the knee has to come out here. So I'm threatening kind of like a knee cut within half guard. And then with the separation of knee elbow connection here, I'm able to start looking at bringing my leg through and moving into the 411 on top, which then is going to allow me to move to the 411 or turn it towards the knee bar. All those require the same thing in which the half guard player is not framing you out, managing the range effectively, and knee elbow connection comes open. So when we talk about strong structure, one of the main things or uh, formations that people think about is knee elbow connection. If I have strong knee elbow connection, then I am denying you the ability to control the inside space between my hip and my shoulders. This is great for guard retention. This is great for just keeping proper alignments so that we're not going to be vulnerable for submissions. So these kind of leg lock entries typically start happening when I don't have my leg in play, checking my opponent's range as well as my arms. You don't see Craig Jones or any of these other high level guys getting hit with these kind of entries very often because if I'm keeping Kevin back like this, notice that my knee is in front of his body. Let's just turn slightly more. With my knee in front of Kevin, it's very hard for him to control the knee line effectively. If I, even if I don't have knee elbow connection, if I'm here, if he tries to do a back step into the 411 right now, he can't because the knee's right here. He needs the knee to go past his hip now that he's in front of my knee. Now I can control the knee line quite easily. If I have my knee in front of him like this and he tries to throw the leg over, it's very difficult for him to be able to actually control the knee in a way that even if he throws the leg over like this, my leg is quite shallow. And so it's going to be very easy for me to extract. So the problem comes when we start playing these deeper half guards that I'm not really a fan of. This stuff can work in the gi because the gi we're able to start doing like uh, Bernardo Faria where you're feeding the, uh, the lapel through underneath the legs and grabbing it. And that's going to be breaking his posture the whole time. This is much more difficult to do no gi. So typically, I recommend the half guard shell. It can also be Z guard where our right hand is going to be framed to the inside of our opponent's bicep, sometimes wrist, just so that we're blocking their ability to control our head, stopping that cross face. This hand is blocked to the cross shoulder because it's going to be the leading edge of him trying to drive down into me. If he's trying to pressure past me anyway, this is going to be the lead shoulder. This elbow is ready to check the other shoulder in case he switches directions. So like. If Kevin starts to try and force more with that underhook, I'm starting to use my elbow here to frame him. My knee is going to come up and it's going to be reinforced framing against his shoulder with my elbow on the inside of it here, framing up at his shoulder here and here. My foot can be here on his hip and then this leg is going to be hooking through the half guard and if my legs are long enough, I can bring this up and establish a frame here against his hip. So let's just turn. So here, one frame, two frame, three frames, four, five, six. There is no way he can attack me with anything right now because I have so many layers of frames stopping him from being able to do anything. I also have tight knee elbow connection on this side. So just this kind of structure and half guard, depending on if you're using this for more retention purposes or defensively, being able to bring your legs up and framing them out 
it's going to be extremely helpful. I can do the same thing, but I'm just going to have my leg down here a little more of a set guard kind of style. Same thing's applying. If Kevin tries to go for any of those entries right now, it's extremely difficult for him to get to the point that he needs to be able to control me. If we are going a little bit lower here, then just try and keep a knee elbow connection as much as possible. Like for me to keep knee elbow connection, usually my shin will always be in front of him anyway. It's not going to do me a lot of good if I'm trying to keep my elbow to my thigh, but I'm going super low on his hip because he'll be able to just back step and sit on top of my hand. And that's going to pin my arm as a lever to my hip. And it's just going to really suck. So back here. So here, once my knee drips, uh, uh, drags past his hip here, I can't really connect my arm effectively to my leg. So even if I try and block here to deny some inside space, it's not actually going to be effective. It doesn't stop his motion at all. And then I'm going to be looking at it going into that knee bar threat. So try and keep your knee actually up high and blocking here so that you're creating a wall that's just stopping your opponent from being able to get over to the hip. And so like this is just more of a a little bit of preventative work at the beginning of just keeping yourself in proper alignment. Try not to play that super deep uh, half guard unless that is your style and you know specifically what you're looking for to make that effective. Or even something like say lockdown where you're actually, I'm not a fan of lockdown, but at least there you're controlling the lever to the hip and denying them the ability to be able to effectively rotate over to attack the knee line. So those are some options. Obviously that's going to fail at some point against uh, skilled leg lockers or people that are able to really threaten guard passing. So the next videos, we're going to go over what to do when things start to go south for us.